so this is an interactive demo of uh, visualizing uh, embedding vectors computed from uh, cats, dogs, and planes. And as you see um, from this image and my blog entry earlier, um, here, here is like a 250 cats, um, and they're each cat's uh, embedding vector is plotted out as a line here. Uh, and uh, a couple of hundred uh, dogs and a hundred planes or so, uh, all on the same uh, image. Uh, and you see that there are definitely differences in the patterns uh, uh, between planes and, and animals, right? Uh, but uh, when I compare cats and dogs vectors, then this uh, uh, machine learning inference, uh, what I what I applied on these photos, it indeed generates some similarities between uh, cat and dog uh, images. There are plenty of differences, of course, but you see there are some similarities because they are, uh, you know, they are somewhat more similar objects um, uh, in the in the training models um, used for this uh, uh, image uh, detection. Right. So uh, let's go to the um, uh, interactive part now. Okay, so we have these bands, right? So what can we do with this interactive um, interactive mode? But you see, you know, there's a lot of um, stuff going on here, uh, but uh, this looks like an outlier. You see, there is because there is like uh, there is like one uh, one blue line that others don't seem to have that, you know, in a, that prolonged way, you see? And when I move my mouse over here, uh, it's indeed, it's a different photo, you see? Um, let me just get here again, you see? There's a lot of green, a lot of uh, very cold values. So basically something was not detected, but what others in, what for other cat photos was detected, right? Or recognized by the vision model. And you see, there is a, a whole range of very low values, very cold values like zero, and indeed, this is a cat photo, it, at least to, to our eyes, there is this, you know, blurry cat there, but other stuff going on on this photo, it's so much more prominent than the cat, right? So, uh, uh, so this is, uh, and by the way, the photo itself is uh, pretty big as well, uh, but there is only like one bubble with, with, with actual information. Everything else is just white, you know, white background. And these are not my photos, right? So these are the Kaggle uh, you know, competition data set of, of 25,000 pet photos, right? Um, so anyway, so that's one outlier. Um, and if I scroll down, you see there is another guy as well where, is, where there seems to be like a, like a line, a, a bit of, a, a, you know, a, a pattern you see. There is a line of a, a cold pixels. Uh, very little background visible and uh, you know recognizable as, as actual useful objects. Um, so here is another outlier. Um, of course, as humans, we cannot you know this is not complete a complete way whatsoever to uh, recognize uh, uh, you know to understand what's going on here. We are not reading the matrix here, right? <laughs> so uh, successfully anyway. But I just wanted to show you what these vectors really are. It's just a, these are just arrays of, um, of different, uh, um, different uh, pixels in, in our visualization. Uh, but really they are just uh, floating point numbers and a thousand numbers, uh, you know, in, a, in an array called a vector uh, for each cat photo in this case. And now let's go to the planes. Uh, so here's another example. If I look into the planes, so uh, do we see interesting, uh, outliers here as well and indeed if you follow these uh, you know uh, horizontal lines then there are some outliers right so one seems to be around here one seems to be around here one is here and one is here perhaps so let's see if there's anything different about these guys so uh, so these are the typical plane photos you know usually i mean there are so many which are where uh, you know you just have the sky in the background you know but some of them are on the land, on, on the tarmac as well. So these are the typical photos. But this, uh, if I go to the red line here, so so let's see if the, if you find the outlier. So you see, uh, this looks like uh, 
the outlier, which is interesting. But perhaps uh, the reason is that in the background there are mountains as well, right? So and then the, there are enough interesting features, other things that the model detected. So it's not only a plane and and the blue sky, but there are mountains in the background. Um, this is just a wild guess, probably wrong, but you know, still useful to you. Uh, when I try to illustrate what's going on. So here's another one, you see. So very basically this line here, and when I move my mouse over here, you see it looks like it's this guy. A lot of cold, you know, a lot of blue cold values. And I think we'll have a, you see, this This is one of the cold values, right? So, uh, and you know, this is uh, most of the photo is, is covered by the um, sort of hidden behind, or not most, you know, half of the photo is hidden behind the, the um, uh, the wing of the plane, perhaps that's why the plane itself is less recognizable. Uh, and um, uh, but you have like palm trees, trees in the background. So it, it definitely is not exactly like all the other planes, right? Like all the other planes are typically something like this, right? And if you go on, so there is another one. Uh, you see, look at that guy. So there is this giant uh, uh, cold line, and when I move my mouse there. Yeah, it's an airplane. It is an airplane photo, right? But it is not like all the other airplane photos, right? So it's from the inside, right? So it it looks totally different, right? So and again, the only reason why this photo is here is that whoever put together this, whatever whatever was the human that put together the data set, they just put all kinds of photos here, right? So so uh, this might, if I want to like uh, find one outlier, that which photo should I throw away from this data set? just purely by uh, vector similarity search, then this might be the guy, right? Because actually it's not the plane from outside like all the others, right? So, um, but you know, wh whoever was the human who put it in here, then, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's why it's in here. Um, I wonder if there's anything else interesting. So this guy, you see, that's another one. It looks like, let me see if it's the right one. Yeah, you see, there is a lot of cold here. Value is zero. That's the blue uh, pixel. And uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the photo is black and white. Perhaps that's that's one of the reasons for the for the difference. And it's also, you know, it's not in the air. It's not on the field. It's not on the tarmac. It's actually inside of some building with a lot of you know other planes and other stuff in the background, right? So, uh, what's not usually in the, all the other photos. So that's why this line shows up here. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much all, you know, if you if you wonder what a sordid means, so this actually is not useful, really useful at all, but I just wanted to see that what would this, uh, you know, if I took every line, every uh, embedding and every pixel and and within one line, within one uh, plain photo, I ordered the pixels. I, I totally will scramble and mess up the meaning of this vector, right? But if I order the pixels, I wanted to see how much variability there is. Um, so you can do this. And let's not normalize anymore. So, so we will actually uh, show the variability between this, uh, um, uh, you know, vectors, so to speak, uh, in a very compressed manner. So, so that's uh, uh, that's what the um, plane uh, heat map in a sorted way looks like. And if I kind of change this to, let's look into the cats, um, you know, sorted and and not normalized. Uh, so if I now flip between these two, uh, so so planes. So this is uh, uh, cats. Uh, this is planes. You know, as you see from here, right? So uh, there is all that shows you. It looks like you know in this particular output uh, set of uh, embedding vectors, there is just more vari variability between the extreme min and max uh, value. Uh, you know, uh, within. Uh, or oh, sorry, across you know a bit between different vectors, right? So uh, uh, it's not too useful, but I just wanted to see see how it looks like. And if you haven't seen my original blog entry where I, I kind of uh, introduce what are vectors at very high level and kind of explain how did I do the visualizations of all the cats and dogs, then uh, uh, just uh, go to my blog and. Uh, it's currently the first latest article uh, there.